Good evening, Sister Drina, Diana, Barbara, Larry. It is great to see you guys on this evening. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice, and I'm going to be glad in it. And I hope you guys have had a wonderful, wonderful day. God is good. Well, welcome to our prayer focus devotion. My name is Elisa Walker, and um, I'm just thanking you for coming out and hanging out with me on this Monday. God is truly good. Can you guys believe that we are in the fifth month of the year? It is May. Hello, Janice. Good to see you. It is May. Hi, Sister Virginia. It's great to see you on. Sister Arnold, hello. Hello, Sister Mary. It is great to see you all on. Hi, Linda, Michelle. Great to see you on. Well, you guys, we're going to get started. Today is May the 3rd, 2021. Hi, Sandra. And my devotional scripture comes from 1 Peter 5, verse 8. It says, be alert, be on watch. Your enemy, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. And this is the good news translation. Now, before I even go further, if you guys didn't see the 1030 service yesterday with our pastor, Dr. Joshua Beckley, you need to go see it because it was titled The Enemy and it was incredible. And I love how the Lord just works things out because the Lord had given me uh, this devotion and then pastor came on with his sermon yesterday and God is just so good how he does that. I love that. So again, for those who are just now coming in, hi, Sister Marla and Sister Pauline. I want to read our devotional scripture one more time. It's from 1 Peter 5 and 8. It says, be alert, be on watch. Your enemy, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And my devotional thought the enemy has no remorse. You see, we are born into a world that is corrupt. Satan is the prince of this world. His desire is to keep you from Jesus and all the promises that God has for you. The moment you accept Jesus into your life and start walking the straight and narrow path of righteousness, who pulls up? Oh yeah, you know him, the enemy. He disguises himself as an angel of light. You have been told not to get in the car with strangers, but yet we get in and we ride. At first, it's fun. You're laughing and you see all the bling and things that he has access to. Then we say, hmm, I want some of that. Show me the money. And then the enemy, he sets us up with some of his homeboys and shows us how to obtain easy money, how to cheat and get over on people. But you know what? After a while, you start to get a little stressed and you start looking over your shoulder. You're hoping you won't get got by someone you have wronged. You see, it's like riding in a car aimlessly down a windy road and the enemy's driving. The reason he's going so fast is because if someone can reach you and tell you about Jesus, you might get out of the car because this car is headed for destruction. And at the time of impact, oh, Satan, he jumps out and he hopes that you will be another fatality one less witness for Christ. Now, if in fact you get out of the situation, you give praise to God and now you start back walking on the right path. But three days later, perhaps three weeks, maybe three months, why are you back in the car again? Stop playing with the enemy. 
You see, God may spare your life, but do not be deceived because God is not mocked. Your reckless behavior can cause new Christians to stumble or even turn away from their faith. Unbelievers are watching you and you are making our God look like a joke. So listen here, you must be hot or cold, not lukewarm. Are you for God or are you against him? Stop straddling the fence. How can we worship him on Sunday? We wave our hands and we say hallelujah. And then Monday through Saturday, you defile his holy name. And then after we've sinned, we have what is called remorse. Some people do. Remorse is a deep regret or guilt for a wrong committed. And we can go to God and ask for forgiveness, but you got to go to him with a sincere heart. But listen closely, and I want you to listen good. The enemy has no remorse. And in case you didn't hear me, I'm going to say it again. The enemy has no remorse. You see, he ain't sorry. He's not sorry that you got on drugs and lost your family. He's not sorry that you got another DUI. The enemy is not sorry that you told a lie and got someone fired. He's not your friend and he never has been. He's not sad when you get caught red handed in blatant disobedience to the Lord our God. As a matter of fact, he is probably the reason you are currently where you are. Let's keep it 100. He is only interested in using you to his advantage. You see, Satan uses you as an accomplice. When you as a Christian take part in Satan's schemes, you are pointing people away from God and into a dark pit of despair. You see, he'll do whatever it takes. Satan will use you until he uses you up. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Count the relationships he has destroyed in your life. He wants to kill your witness for Jesus, and he wants to steal your time. You see, our time on earth is like a puff of smoke which appears for a moment and then it disappears. And while you're busy moonlighting for the deceiver, people are headed to hell. Did you hear me? People are headed to hell by the droves and your fingerprints are all over the evidence. But I got some good news, you guys. You can drop to your knees and you can surrender right now. Tell the Lord that you're sorry because it's not too late. God forgives. But the thing is, you got to do it today because tomorrow may not come. Because tomorrow is not promised. But I want to share three ways that you can show the enemy the door. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So somebody might say, well, how do I resist him? How do I stand against him? Well, I'm so glad that you asked me. Ephesians 6, 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. Number two, you got to put God first. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And number three, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. That's James 4, 8a. So you have to know 
that when you were in the presence of the Lord, the enemy ain't messing with you. He's about to leave, get out your face. He don't want to be there. He already told God how he feel about him. So if you stay in the protection, in the arms of the Lord, you are protected because God is good. Amen. Hi, Stacy. He is good. So listen, when you have the word hidden in your heart and you believe that God has given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and that nothing shall harm you, only then will the enemy realize that you know the power that you possess. And when you call on that name, oh, he's going to flee. And he's going to speed off in search of another whom he can devour. <sighs> God is good. You guys, we're going to get ready to pray. But before we pray, there may be somebody who has been in church, maybe even working in ministry, and the pandemic hit. And you started finding yourself slipping back into your old ways. You started hanging out with the wrong crowd. You started doing the wrong things. But you know what? Maybe you've backslidden. But I tell you what you can do. You can ask for forgiveness. You can tell the Lord you're sorry right now. And he will forgive you. Maybe there's someone who's listening who has never accepted Jesus. And today would be a great day for you to make Jesus your king. Let's pray. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart and to be Lord over my life as well as my Savior. I believe that you died on Calvary in my place and your father raised you from the grave and that you rose with all power in your hands. Oh, Lord, I believe you are seated at the right hand of the Father and that you will return for your church. And that includes me. Lord, I surrender to all of you. I will serve you and only you. The world behind me and the cross is set before me and I will follow you for the rest of my life. I pray this prayer in your son Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If anyone has prayed that prayer right now for the first time, welcome to the family of God. God is mighty and I'm excited for you because now your life truly begins. And so what you can do, if you go to Ecclesia.com and click on the praying hands, you can type in there and tell us that you received God. And someone from our office will contact you within about 48 hours. That is such good news. And you got to tell somebody, share, some, share with someone that you gave your life to God. You've got to do that. It's so important. And my sisters and brothers, please text your 10. Share this video that it might encourage someone. We don't want people to go to hell. We, we want to share Jesus with everybody, everyone that we can. So I have a song for you that I would love for you guys to play. It's by Toby Mac, T-O-B-Y-M-A-C. And the song is called Sorry. It is a really good song. So I would love for you to, however you uh, receive music, I, I music, Spotify, Pandora, whatever it is, turn it on and find Toby Mac. The song is called Sorry. But I want to leave you with this. We've just heard a word. And now you know the enemy's mad. He does not like it one bit. So tomorrow, when he tries to come at you, don't be afraid. Don't give in. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. God bless you. And don't forget, the enemy has no remorse. Give your life to Christ, and I tell you, it's going to be the best thing that you ever did. 
God bless you. You guys have a wonderful evening and good night.